Hi, Cat's Cradle here. My favorite summer vegetable after tomatoes are yellow squash. Yellow crookneck squash happen to be my favorite, but this year I'm growing a variety of straight neck squash. A lot of people grow zucchini and that's okay. I don't I don't mind it, but it's not my favorite. I think there's something bitter about it and I just find yellow squash much more pleasant to eat. I planted four squash uh, probably about a month and a half ago and one of them succumbed to squash vine borer but I've got three left and they're producing like crazy. I've been saving up squash for the last two or three days and now am ready to cook some. I've always uh, liked squash and found so many ways to cook it. Uh, Prepper A's very favorite way is to have it fried but her next favorite way is the way I'm going to be preparing it tonight. You can see on this plant that there's lots of blossoms. This was taken in the evening and the, the some of the blossoms are closed but some of the yellow you see in there are actually little baby squash so I'm really hoping I can keep these plants alive. Here's what I collected over the last two or three days. In fact after this photograph was taken I sent Prepper A out and she cut about three more squash that went into the pot. I wanted to cook as many up as I can I expect probably to get two meals out of this, maybe three. Um, anyway, you can see I've got it in a pasta pot. I'll show you a little closer view of that in a minute and tell you why I like that so much. One of the squash she brought in was this kind of unusual looking one. These started out exactly the same size, these little twin squash that were welded together. And then as the one on top began to die, then the second one was able to go ahead and grow. And all I had to do is just cut that bad one off and be able to use the one underneath. It was perfectly fine. Here's the pasta pot. It has holes all over it and you might know how this works. You just set it in a pot, another bigger pot of boiling water. Your vegetables cook and then you just drain all the water off. I use this pot all the time for blanching vegetables when I'm going to can them or freeze them. It's so convenient because I can put so many in there and get them done at one time and then just lift up that whole strainer pot, drain all of the water out. In fact, I can leave it kind of sitting tilted on my pot and, you know, get absolutely every bit of water out. I just love this pot. It's absolutely worth the money. This was about the biggest squash I cooked. And even at this side, you can, size, you can see that the seeds have not really developed very well. And that's how I like it. Because if you let those seeds get too big, when you quick cook that squash, the seeds will fall out of the middle and you'll end up with a hole there and so I like it when the seeds are are really small like this so after I got them washed and all cut up this is what I ended up with a nice big pot full of squash that I put on the heat and boiled it until they got very soft now I don't usually cook my vegetables until they're soft but for the casserole I'm making tonight they need to be that way Anybody who comes to my house and sees that I have squash always asks for this particular recipe, this squash casserole, which is really, I guess, kind of like a, a scalloped squ uh, squash casserole. Uh, and I really would rather make it than frying squash because that's just a big old mess and I hate dealing with the, the leftover oil, although that is Prepper A's favorite way and I will have to do that eventually. When I boil the squash, I don't put any salt in the water, especially tonight I didn't because uh, so many of the plants outside uh, on my front porch are dry and I want to be able to use that squash water that's rich in vitamins to water them with, so I'm not going to salt it. Like I said, this is about two meals worth and I'm going to probably mash up all of this, use half of it tonight and put the other half in the freezer so that one night when I come home from work in the fall and want squash casserole, all I have to do is just pull it out and mix in the extra ingredients. Squash is not really that difficult to grow, but you do have to watch out for the vine borers and the squash beetles. Once the vine borers make a hole in your plant, an opening where I guess the, uh, the beetles smell it and then they just come and just start feasting on it and absolutely destroy it. Once that happens, uh, you're in real trouble. Uh, there are a couple of things you can ap apply to it to try to fix it, but um, when it's as hot as it's been, sometimes it's just almost impossible for the plant to recover. 
So now I made a little video and I'm going to show you a little bit uh, about the process of making the casserole. So after the squash is completely done, and like I said, I cook it pretty soft, then I put it in this pretty standard, I think that's probably a, about an 8 by 8 Pyrex casserole dish. And I'm just using a potato masher here just to break up the squash. You'll see that some of the little outside rim, the peel doesn't, doesn't mash up. You don't need to make it into a puree. You just don't want to have it in solid disc. So I just shake off my um, potato masher and then I'm going to add a few more things to this. I'm going to add some fresh cracked black pepper. I put a good bit of that on there. And then I'm going to sprinkle it with a little pink salt. And I'm pretty generous here since I didn't salt the water that the squash cooked in. And then I've got some grated cheese here. I'm going to put, a, put about a cup in right now. Just sprinkle that on and it'll start to melt because that squash is pretty hot. I'm going to break a fresh egg in there. And I do pr move pretty quickly with this fork here because that squash is really hot and I don't exactly want to scramble that egg right now. I want to get it all worked in there. It's really kind of making a custard around that squash, although uh, I don't want you to get that in your head because it doesn't necessarily taste like custard. It's just the the principle of it with the egg and the cheese and uh, I am putting in five cups two nice big tablespoons of mayonnaise. Mayonnaise is a great thing to put in baked vegetables if you want to give it a really nice luxurious taste. This isn't something we would eat every day. Generally my favorite way to eat squash is just steamed with a little green onion, a little bit of butter, and salt and pepper. That's my favorite way. So this is kind of a special treat. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to break up a few crackers into that. Um, oh, first of all, I forgot. First of all, let me put in the onions and bell pepper. Now these onion and bell pepper are, are from my garden as well. And I sauteed them in the microwave in just they were uh, in just about a tablespoon of butter and I let them get soft. If you don't do that then you have to cook the casserole much longer in order to soften the bell pepper and onion and it's just too hot to have the oven on that long. I'm hand crushing a few little crackers in here. You can use like a Ritz cracker, a butter, Ritz butter cracker or you could use a saltine. It doesn't matter. But when that squash goes in the oven the squash is going to yield up a little more juice and you don't want that floating around in your casserole and those breadcrumbs take care of that. Plus they, they give it that scalloped casserole kind of taste. I, li I really like the tang that the mayonnaise gives this. It's not overpowering and people probably wouldn't be able to identify it when they tasted it, but it's just delicious. A few little more crackers crushed on top. Then I'm going to gather up that little fourth cup of remaining cheese and sprinkle that on as well. You can grease this dish before you assemble your casserole. It makes it just a little bit easier to clean, but I'm not too too worried about it. Here comes the little bit of cheese sprinkled on just, just to brighten the top of it a little bit. And then I'm going to pull the old trick that that homemakers used to use in the uh, 60s and early 70s, they would sprinkle the top of casseroles with paprika and I think that still is a good idea sometimes if you're cooking something that's kind of pale. I'm trying to brighten up my squash with a little bit of cheese and paprika here. It just gives it a nice pretty color when it's baked. There you go. Preparation said, show the bottle, Mama. She was my camera person. So we forgot to show you the casserole when we took it out of the oven before we served up Palette and Prepper's plate, but here it is. And it's just as nice as it can be. It's a beautiful color and uh, it just cooks up so quickly once everything's really done. All you're doing is cooking it long enough to melt the cheese and set the egg. But that doesn't take long because you've already beaten the egg into hot squash anyway. So here's how it looks plated up. Prepper A made the stroganoff to go, uh, to go with it. She did that by herself. She did a great job. And you can see how nice it looks. The paprika and the cheese add a little color on top and then the beautiful yellow of the squash. And here's a close-up of the casserole itself. It is really, 
really good. I hope you'll give it a try. It's a great thing to do with your summer squash and if you have a lot of squash and you cook it and mash it up and put it in in uh, containers in the freezer then it's so easy to throw this casserole together. I hope you'll give it a try and let me know if you do. Cat's Cradle.